Good evening and welcome to the Truth Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. We have a very special guest today. We have Phil Haney with us. You might recognize Phil as one of the founding members of Homeland Security here in the United States. He's a 35-year member of law enforcement with an expertise in Middle Eastern and terror policy. But before we get started, I want to make sure you remember that you can text TRUTH, the word is TRUTH, to 88202 to subscribe to our mailing list and you will never miss an exciting episode and future episodes, videos, articles will come directly to your phone simply by sending TRUTH to 88202. So Phil, welcome aboard. It's great to have you today. Great. Thank you so much. Talk about Pakistan. So Bolton's out. We don't know who is in. What's the situation in Pakistan, Phil? Well, right now, President Trump's very upset with them as well. And he made that quite public with Imran Khan. What was it, last month? when he came to Washington and said flat out, paraphrasing, we're not happy with what we've been getting in terms of uh, return for our investment vis-a-vis -vis foreign aid. You're supposed to be watching these Haqqani groups and these Deobandi groups and the and the Lash Kitaibas and the Tablighi Jamaats and even the Taliban themselves, but you're not doing it. In fact, you're using them as proxies against India. And right now, the flashpoint, of course, that illustrate that so well is Kashmir. You've probably been watching the headlines virtually every day the pressure is blowing up like a balloon right now. That's has been a sore spot since 1948. The same time as Israel and Hamas and the Gaza and Palestine started, this same issue between India and Pakistan started in the same year, 1948. And uh, there's a Muslim majority in Kashmir. And the premise is that Pakistan should control it because it's a Muslim majority. Whereas India says, no, it's historically been part of India and we want to keep it that way also for security. It's a security issue. Like It's just like the Jordan River Valley. Exactly the same kind of thing, which of course you know Netanyahu just recently announced. They're going to upgrade the status of the Jordan River to secure uh, the borders of Israel. So very, very similar kind of thing. So let, uh, we have one one more foreign policy area to talk about on the other side of the world, Bill, which is North Korea. As mm -hmm. everybody knows, uh, there's been great hoopla. Trump is talking to Kim, and uh, something's going to happen, and then he's not. Then he's going to talk to Kim Jong-un again, and there's going to be a deal, and then there's not. What do you think the changes are going to be in regards to Korea at this point? That's the hardest one for me to answer because they're so opaque. It's very hard to see into what North Korea is going to do. I read a, a passing reference, reference between the respect that the North Koreans had for President Trump versus the respect or less lack of respect that they had for Bolton. So where did that come from? Is that propaganda or, or is that a personality uh, evaluation or a foreign policy statement? It's hard to tell, isn't it? Because they're really hard to read. So I'm less uh, confident about what might happen in North Korea than, than in the other regions that I focus on more, except for the account for the nuclear program. That would be the, the thing that ties them together. Pakistan, North Korea, yeah, dirty bombs, and all sorts of unpleasant things to talk about. And of course, you know, the puppet master is going to be China. So there's China with North Korea. And meanwhile, there's China sitting, as I said, like a vulture on the wire, waiting for Afghanistan to uh, get resolved. And they're going to come in and hand the Afghanis not... How much was it? 150 billion? What was it that President Obama gave the uh, Iranians? They're going to hand them even more. And they won't have, they won't meddle. 
in the internal politics. They'll just give them all this stuff and say, we buy the rights to your whole country. And that's the thing that hurts me the most, or among the most, is all that sacrifice. You know the sad thing about Afghanistan? It could actually be nearly a garden of Eden. With all that resource, if they actually took it and put it back into the country and built up the Af infrastructure, developed the agriculture and the transportation, that place could be as nice as anywhere in the world. It's because they have the resources to do it. And everybody's suffering because of the Islamic influence in Afghanistan and that entire part of the world. And by the way, just to sum up, their whole goal is not terrorism or even jihad. It's implementation of Sharia law. And if they come in the next time, they're going to come in like a flood. I really cringe to even think about it. There's going to be a level of vindictiveness that's going to surpass the last time. Because now they're going to say, we've had to do this twice. And we're going to make darn sure this time that we never have to do it again. So uh, if you believe in prayer, it would be a good time to pray for President Trump and everybody in that national security community. Because this is a hard one, but we dodged the bullet by him withdrawing, saying it's dead. That was a good thing because it was a really bad deal. Thanks, Phil. No, that, was, that was great stuff. Uh, thanks for joining us today on the Truth Report. You can always go to our website, americantruthproject.org. You can find it by just typing in findberry.com. That takes you right to the website where you can sign up so you never miss an exciting episode. And don't forget, text TRUTH to 88202. 88202 gets you on our mailing list. And this time, you'll get all of our stuff for free right in your phone every single day without having to do anything more to do. Again, thanks for joining us. I'm very useful.